Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make these awesome transitions in a matter of seconds using the new Cinepax preset pack for DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so first thing you're going to do is head on over to the Cinepax website where you can find a huge array of free assets and paid assets that you can use for video editing. Today we're going to be using the transition pack for DaVinci Resolve. And once you have that downloaded, we're gonna head on over to DaVinci Resolve so we can start working. So you're gonna get this file right here. In order to install the pack, it's extremely simple. Just head on over to the Fusion tab in DaVinci Resolve and drag this file into the grid. Then DaVinci Resolve is going to ask you to install the pack and click install. Then you can head on over to the edit page again, go to the effects, and you should find underneath the video transitions the brand new Cinepax transition folder right here. Now let's look a little deeper into this transition right here. If we go over to the inspector tab and we click on the transition, you're going to see there's a ton of controls under the control area right here. Now some, but not all of these attributes can actually be overridden. So as you can see, I dragged this up to 10, it won't let me go any further. But if I manually type in 20, it lets me extend it beyond its limit. However, obviously it's gonna start looking weird because we're pushing it really further than it's supposed to go. Um, and that's the reason why that limit exists. However, just keep that in mind if you ever want to try to push a certain look, you have the ability to overwrite things. For some of the transitions, specifically the glitch transitions, you're probably gonna notice that uh, they're gonna require a little bit of rending power. They're not gonna really play at real time and that's because there's a lot of things going on. Um, in order to preview them, it's a good idea you can go up to the playback phase, go down to the render cache and change it to smart and that's going to basically start pre-rendering parts of your footage however the issue is some of the settings will not update live if you run into the issue where you're changing settings in in the attribute editor and they just don't seem to be reflected in the timeline you may want to turn off your user cache to preview edits real time now, if you ever find you want to save one of these presets that you've edited, just right click on the transition and click on create transition preset. That's going to allow you to name it. So we're going to do custom, uh, I don't know, Jesse's custom and click OK. And you'll notice that if you go over to your video transitions and you go to the user tab, there's a preset of your preset. So we can drag this in anywhere else and now all your settings are already customized the way you want it. All right, so let's jump into the section where we go through every single preset and I'm gonna to explain to you how they work. So first up, we got the blur transition, the most simplest one in the entire pack. All it is is a simple blur, not much to talk about and you can adjust the blur amount. So there you go. Next up is the glitch. Now this is a little more complicated one. Um, all of them have the same settings, so let's just go through them. All right, so you have your shake motion scale. This is basically um, when it's shaking, how much how much uh, distance is allowed for it to shake. So the maximum is two, you can't go past that, um, and I like to keep it at that. Then your shake speed is basically like the speed at which it's moving back and forth within that given area. Um, your shake motion blur is obviously the amount of blur that is created. Um, then you have your glitch scale. So this basically, in a complicated terms, it kind of affects the noise pattern of um, how, how detailed the noise that generates the uh, glitch is. So that's more so just mess with it and kind of figure out your personal preference. Uh, hard to, hard to uh, explain in an abstract way. The block size though. So your block size is going to, um, let me turn off, I'm gonna turn off the, the RGB right now so we can actually preview this. In a, in a better better light. Um, so the glitch block size is going to affect the size of the blocks. So if we bring that up a lot, that's gonna be super, super small. If we hold control, let's, oops. If we hold control for fine adjustment, we can bring it really low. So let's go down here. And then as you can see, now the blocks are, are much bigger um, and our, our cubes, we can even make it bigger. So if we bring the block size further and further down it's kind of inverse so the smaller it gets the larger the blocks get there we go so right there as you can see now it's just huge pieces um, that kind of break during the transition um, then you have the glitch displacement so let's reset this back to, to normal um, as you can see when it glitches onto the field of view um, certain parts of it they're glitched by being scaled up so if I bring up the glitch displacement, 
it's going to displace the glitch parts more. You might want to bring that down in some cases because it's going to look like you're zooming in on the footage. Um, so I like to keep it at default, of course, because I'm the one that set up all these defaults. Uh, scan light opacity, that's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Um, just makes the scan lines more prominent or less prominent. Then we have our RGB distortion controls. So basically, if we have our RGB distortion, um, the scale is going to be, it's going to make your RGB channels basically animate and scale inwards. Um, this is going to create kind of a zooming effect because you are scaling the whole image. So just keep in mind, if you really stretch these super far, you might want to keep one channel um, at zero. That way it doesn't look like you're just zooming in on your footage. Um, so now if we play this through and press play, you're going to see uh, it zoomed and split the RGB channels. Now, another way to do it is instead of scaling them, you can do both at once, but it doesn't look look right. Uh, you can instead offset the RGB channels. So instead of scaling them, it's going to offset them either left or right. And you can control uh, the left or right channels wherever it wants to go. So let's press play. And there we go. Now it splits splits in a really cool manner. And last but not least, we have the glow controls, which is pretty self-explanatory. Just bring up the glow amount and it glows more. And then uh, we can play that through. Now it glows. Um, and then if we want to bring up the glow flicker, if we bring it up to something extreme like three, it's going to absolutely kind of seizure and be flashing. And it's going to look cool. Next up, we have our shake. So if we bring the shake onto our uh, timeline right here, uh, this is pretty self-explanatory as well. If we press play, um, it's the exact same controls as the other one. So you have your shake motion scale, which is the distance that it's allowed to move. Uh, so we bring that down, it's not going to move as much. Uh, shake speed, uh, the speed at which it shakes, shake blur, how much blur there is. Now, then you also have zoom controls, rotate, and randomness scale. These are different. So your zoom control is basically if you want to zoom in on the footage. So let's press play, and now you have a quick zoom in effect. Uh, it's probably going to look better on maybe like footage like this. So let's press play, and now it zooms in, right? Cool. Um, you also have a rotate. So when it rotates, it's going to reflect the edges. Um, so as you can see right here, it is mirroring the edges because uh, you're, you're running out of space and the, uh, the clip is clipping. So just keep that in mind. You can compensate by zooming in more. Um, but I prefer sometimes the, the uh, rotation effect just looks cool even with the mirrored corners. So there we go. The last thing is the shake randomness scale. So basically that's going to make it, uh, your shake speed is the speed at which the camera is moving and shaking, but the randomness scale, if you bring that up, it's gonna make it basically uh, more scattered. So it might not move faster, but it's gonna go in random directions and gonna make it super, super abrupt. So kind of hard to notice. It's a little bit more of a fine detail, but you can, you can preview it if you want. Okay, next we move on to the holy grail of the pack, which is the smooth transitions, okay? Every single one of these transitions pretty much have the exact same settings, so we're just gonna go over one of them here. As you can see, this wipes to the corner here, and when it does that though, you're gonna see that it mirrors and tiles the frame, so it basically creates the illusion that it's moving to the next uh, image. And if you go to the tile distance right here, it's gonna increase the amount of tiles that it makes, making it look like it goes further. So let's play that again and now it looks like it's going really far. Next is your blur strength. That's pretty self-explanatory. It's gonna increase the, the amount of blur that exists. So there you go, now it's even more blurry. You can change it, so if you don't like the fact that it mirrors here, you can change it to something like wrap, and it's just going to tile it, which doesn't look too, too good. Uh, canvas and duplicate pretty much break the effect, like it doesn't work properly, so just don't use those. So if you play this through, you can see that it eases in and then eases out, but we can change that. So we can change this to something like uh, a sine wave. So then it's kind of gonna ease and then slow towards the peak of the movement. And we play this again. Now it just moves slightly differently. So that's just if you wanna mess with the animation. You can even go in and set your own custom uh, animation if you want. So we'll go like right here. And if we put this in the middle, it's gonna be pretty much linear. This right here corresponds to the middle of the transition. And then this is where the uh, easing in and the easing out forms. And as you can see, I've completely broken it, which is why I don't touch that. Then we have our shake controls, exact same things as the other ones. So shake amount is purely the amount of distance and the amount that it's allowed to shake. So if we bring our smoothness down and the shake amount up, there we go. We're going to get a little bit of a shake. Definitely looks better with the blur. So let's turn the blur back on and press play. There we go. Now it gets a little bit of a rough kind of 
grungy shake to it. Okay, then we have the glow controls. Um, a good tip, while you're editing all these settings, put your timeline in the middle of the transition. That way you can see what it looks like at the peak of the effect. Because keep in mind, all these settings are animated. So they're going to basically fade in and out for the duration of the uh, transition. So let's just bring up our glow gain. And there we go. Now we have our glow. Um, we can also change the offset. So if we want to give it more of a green tint, we can bring that up. We can bring it down. Uh, we can use this to kind of like coordinate a little bit what we want. So let's give it a little bit of a blue so we get a little bit of a neon sort of retro wave feel to it. Cool. Your threshold basically just means like at what threshold does it start using the glow. So right now if it's at zero, it affects the whole screen. And then this only affects the brightest parts as you bring it up higher. And finally, you have the vignette. This is pretty self-explanatory. Bring up the opacity. And as you can see, there you go. You got a pretty dark vignette that kind of comes in as it moves. Uh, you also have full control over the size. So let's bring the size up and down right there. You can also affect the anamorphism. Yeah, I would use this if you're using uh, Instagram, like vertical uh, footage, then you can bring this down so it'll actually still work on vert vertical footage. It's a good, good note. Our final category is all the stylized one. Now these will be fun for music videos and sort of things. So we have our channel split. So if you bring in our channel split right here and we press play, as you're gonna see, it splits the channels. It's pretty simple. It just kind of splits it open and then cuts. Um, you have other controls though. So we have our shake controls. So shake, uh, shake speed, shake motion blur, all the same things. But then you have your red scale. So if we bring up our red scale, um, it's sort of the same as before um, in the glitch effect that we went over. Uh, you can affect basically if the, you know our channels are distorted by being zoomed. Along with that, you also have your offset. So let's bring our, our scale back down to, let's bring all our scale back to zero. And now we can just purely do an offset. So now we're just offsetting it however we want. So this one will bring up our glow a little bit, but I like to bring up the glow flicker. And that definitely makes a more seamless transition where there we go, it looks much sicker in that, that regard. So if we bring up the hue, we actually have the ability to basically shift the hue as it opens up. So if we press play, you're gonna notice it kind of shifts the hue in a really cool way. I love that. Um, and then on top of that, if you also want to really distort things, there's a, a waviness. Um, so if we bring up the wave uh, tremendously like this, then we get a little bit of a distorted kind of wave while this happens. There we go. Which you'll also find that there's another preset right here that already has the waves enabled. All right, cool. So let's move on to the hue cycle. So you'll notice as before, it has the shake motion scale, shake speed, which is basically the amount it's allowed to move, and then the speed at which it's allowed to move. Um, but then you also have uh, motion blur, same thing as before, but you also have a zoom control here. So you can have an animated zoom, so that it zooms in like this. Um, and then you have a rotate control, so you can also have it rotate as well. Um, then we have the hue cycle speed. So as you can see, it's cycling through uh, the hue slider basically, it's animated. So if we bring up the cycle speed to something like four, it's gonna rapidly change colors much faster. So it's almost seizuring, there you go, you see. Uh, the glow amount is the amount it's gonna glow at the peak of the transition. So right there, it went to complete uh, white, or we can bring it down to something like that. There we go, and press play. Same thing with invert, you can adjust the amount at which it moves, the shake speed, the shake blur, the zoom and rotate animations, but then also you can individually check if you want to invert the red, green, or blue channels. So right now, here's your base inversion. That's exactly what you would expect from an invert um, effect. But you can now change if you want to exclude the red channel or maybe the blue channel. And you can get some pretty cool looking effects here. If you want more control, bring on the flicker version of it, and you'll see that there's a ton of flicker controls here. So basically now this is a little different because you have control over the mount that it's going to flicker. So this is basically the range, so how bright and how dark the flicker is allowed to get. So let's bring that all the way up. There we go. And it's flickering intensely. Uh, I'll bring it back down to the default. Uh, you can also change if you want to flicker the gamma, gain, vignette. Those are just different modes of flickering, uh, and I leave that up to you for personal preference to experiment with. Um, flicker speed is the amount at which it's going to flicker, so we can bring this all the way down to something like 0.1, and it's not going to flicker that fast. Uh, and then flicker smoothness is also going to affect basically the generation of how, uh, how back and forth it goes randomly. Um, so it might kind of ease in and out, or if you bring it all the way down, it's going to roughly just basically just 
back and forth really fast uh, without any sort of smoothness to its uh, value change. And then, of course, you can also change the Flickr RGB channel or all of the above. So now you have multiple things um, competing with each other, so you're getting a ton of different color changing effects. Then we have strobe, which is a pretty cool effect. As for settings, you have your standard uh, motion scale, so the amount of shakes, shake speed, blur, zoom, rotate, we've gone over all of those. Um, then you also have, if you want to flicker the gamma, the gain, or flicker vignette, we have this flicker speed control and the flicker smoothness, but you can also, once again, change if you want to flicker the RGB channel. So right now we're just flickering the green channel, and that gives you a cool colorized strobing effect. So really fun to mess with, and we can increase the range, so it's probably going to be a lot more intense like that or decrease the range all the way down to let's say 0.1 and now it's just probably going to be extremely light you barely even notice it and the last two effects are probably the most abstract ones we have on the pack which is the vortex one so if you bring this in um, probably by default a little too crazy what I like to do is stretch this one out immensely and actually I don't have enough room to stretch it out so let me go ahead and trim both of these down so we have room to work with and pull it out like that so now if we drag the vortex out and let's extend this out to double the length there we go we got our trippy cool little effect there i love that um so it looks cool I have a glow amount which will kind of help uh basically glow as it gets to the center that needs to be toned down tremendously so let's bring this down to maybe 0.4 and if we press play, now it glows, which is also a preset for the Votex Glow, which is the last transition in the pack, which if we press play, there it glows slightly and then transitions into the next footage. All right, that just about sums up the transition pack for today. I hope you guys enjoy this and you find it extremely useful. Uh, there's not a lot of packs that have this much uh, customizability in the inspector, and it was a real blast for us to put it together and really, really hope that you guys get a lot of use and benefit out of it. If you want to keep your eye out for any other packs and transitions on the Cinepax website, head on over there and use the code SAMPLE15 to get 15% off any of your orders. As always, thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a great time editing.